Hadley and her children, Noah and Kayla, experienced a waking nightmare. What started as a sunny summer day ended with their home torn apart and reeking of tear gas. Noah, at the time 15 years old, was the only one there when police surrounded his home. Well, I'm thinking it's the game. So I look at the game and, you know, I just keep on playing. Then all of a sudden I hear, I turn around to East Calvary Street, come up with your hands up. So I look outside and I see everybody pointing their guns at me. Police had a warrant for a man wanted in a shootout miles away on the other side of South Bend. Police thought the man was using the home's internet connection, but he was never in the house. Let me call my mama first. I don't know what you want. Noah came out with his hands over his head. He was handcuffed, put in a squad car, and later taken to the county jail. Amy and Kayla came home to find the street closed off and their house surrounded. They repeatedly told police that they didn't know the suspect and explained that their security camera footage would show that he was never there. But no one believed them. For hours, police issued orders through a bullhorn, but the only living thing in the house was the Hadley's cat. They destroyed my entire house for no reason. They could have came through the front door looking for who they were looking for, and they did not do it. The South Bend SWAT team threw a flashbang through the front door and launched about 20 tear gas grenades through windows and holes they poked into the house. Kayla and Amy watched from down the street. Uh, when they first threw the tear gas in, I was angry, I was yelling, I was upset. It's not the right house! That's what we're trying to tell you! That is not the right house! Because, you know, they had the wrong house and they're starting to destroy it now, so I was pretty upset. Police left that evening with the house in shambles. All the windows are broke. Um, all the cameras were thrown out. Um, I had a mirror that was broke. The ceiling got like dents in them from the tear gas bombs. All of our rooms have dents in the ceilings because of that. Um, the bathroom, the light, the vent. There's like a little closet on the side. There's like a big old hole in there filled with like tear gas and stuff. I'm pretty sure they broke um, his Xbox. We walked in the house. We were coughing, gagging, throwing up. We had to sleep in the car. We slept in the car in our driveway. Um, it took about three days to be able to actually go into the house. Fortunately, the family cat survived, but other things damaged in the raid were irreplaceable. I could never recover that. I mean, that was like my yearbooks, my, my dead family's pictures. I'll never be able to recover that, ever. The Hadleys still find glass shards and smell gas in their basement. Sometimes you still walk down there, you can't breathe. Like you pick it up when you walk with your feet, you know, it picks it up into the air. Amy's homeowner's insurance did not cover all the repairs, leaving her with thousands of dollars in damage she has to pay out of her own pocket. Because the raid was a joint effort of multiple agencies, Amy has been given the runaround when asking for compensation. Oh, I had called South Bend PD, called the marshals, tried to call the county. No one would call me back. I, you know, I tried to do what I had to do and filed my complaint and no one, they didn't do anything. So I don't know. I don't want to stay in this house. Every time the door knocks, I get scared. Amy has teamed up with the Institute for Justice to demand that law enforcement cover the costs. Innocent homeowners deserve to be made whole when the government destroys their property. I just want justice for people that are in the same predicament as my family. 